Well, I am finally back with a new video. I've had to wait until the kids have been to, got back to school and um, um, then my husband decided to rev the bike this morning up, so um, now it's peaceful and quiet again. I've had a few people comment on this card here and they've asked me how I've done the reflection technique. So I thought, well, I'll just do a little video on it because it's actually quite a simple technique to do. So what I've used for this card is some of the watercolor paper and I've just simply cut it to eight centimeters by 14 and a half centimeters. Let's move that back a wee bit. And what you do is you first of all take your little girl. Oh, we're using this stamp set by the way. So it's called Beautiful You and this is just half of it. I didn't bring the other half into here for the time being because I'm only using this image here. So I'm using the archival stamping pad, which is the basic black. And because I actually need the image to go on fairly deeply, um, I'm actually putting the stamping pad underneath it. Um, although this does have sponge, I just want a bit of extra sponge underneath it too. So I'm just going to ink the girl up. So nice and dark. And pop her straight down onto there. Hold it there, five seconds. And lift off and you get that beautiful image. Because this um, watercolour cardstock is actually a little bit bumpy, that's why I'm actually using this underneath it. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway, that's, that's why. So, the, to be able to create this reflection here, we actually need to stamp onto something else, turn it over and stamp it down. So what I've got, I don't know if anyone's come across these, stamp -a jig It is actually a way of positioning your stamps. It comes with this and it also comes with this clear piece. So we're gonna be using this clear piece and I'm going with the smooth side. So again, I'm gonna ink up my girl and doesn't matter where you stamp it, just stamp it nice and firm. And then before it has a chance to dry, turn it upside down, put it down on there, and then rub it down. And you will need to rub fairly firmly and you need to let it soak into the paper. And then that's that. The reason that it comes out so grainy is because this paper is the watercolour paper and it does have um, a bit of a ripple and things to it. So that just cleans up with a wipe, um, which I won't bother doing straight away because I know that it will clean up anyway. And we can put the basic black pad away. Now you do need to make sure that this is completely dry because with the archival ink, if you leave it to completely dry, it becomes colour fast. But if you try and use it earlier than that, it is no longer colour fast, if that makes sense. So with this one, I'm pretty sure that I just picked up the inks from the ink pads. But we now have watercolour pencils. So I figured I could just use the watercolour pencils for her. So I just thought I would go with... Now people have said how have I managed to create this effect down the bottom here. So I'm hoping that this works with the watercolour pencils. But basically all I've done is just used a little bit of that and then I've got my aqua painter and just... You just want to make sure that the colour has gone, the, well, the lines have gone from it, really. And then it just goes over as a very light wash. I don't think that's too bad. I might get rid of that now. That's pretty similar, actually. So I'll let that part dry and I will colour her in. So I might give her a peachy sort of coloured dress. So this one is the Calypso Coral. Just bear in mind with these pens that you don't actually have to colour the whole thing in. And if you want it darker in certain areas, all you do is just add 
extra to that area. So I might just add a bit extra going down these seam parts here. And then we'll just persuade it around a bit with the um, aqua painter. They are just so lovely to use these. little bit of the colour down there. So that's her dress done. And what colour umbrella shall I give her? I might give her a slightly darker one. umbrella just add a wee bit more color in there and blend it in just love the way this color blends in so easily oh, of course it's not going to now but the other thing I have done is I've taken just a little bit of the color from here and added it to the umbrella there and also just take a little bit of the color from her and add it to the dress so you might need to just Give yourself a little bit of the colour on some scrap paper, pick it up and just sort of add it to the dress like that. Just so you've got the tiniest bit of colour in it because let's face it, in a reflection you don't get the full colour. Unless it's incredibly clear. So that's... Um, just about it. Might give her hair a bit of colour there. Blonde hair. Important to be blonde. Like me. A bit of yellow in there as well. There we go. So it's that easy to do the, um, the reflection technique and then it's just a case of um, sort of making it go together with the rest of your components on your card. So thanks for joining me today and I do hope that you check out my heathermccarthyblogspot.com.au um, for any other projects. If you, if you see any of them and you'd like to see a video on it, just let me know and I'll um, see what I can do. Thanks. Bye.